All right. So, um, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Alex Stelbach. I work in the uh, Open Telecom Cloud team at T Systems as an architect. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Yue Feng Pan. I'm senior cloud solutions architect at Huawei. Okay. Okay. Uh, today we're going to talk about. Uh, Keystone and, and, and SAML and how we put that all together and adapted and changed it to uh, fulfill some requirements that are not there in native Keystone for some use cases that we have in, in the Open Telecom Cloud. Um, first of all, that talk should have been given by my colleague Stefan Eisenblätter, who was unfortunately not able to, to join us here. So I'm just standing in for him. Bear with me if I'm not 100% fit in everything, but I will try to, to give as much insight as possible. So first of all, we want to have a quick look at what SAML is, what Keystone is. That's just a very short recap everyone, everyone should know. Then I'm going to talk about the uh, use cases and challenges we see in the Open Telecom Cloud. And after that, I will hand over to Yu Feng for the implementation part. So first of all, Keystone and SAML. Um, SAML is just a security assertion markup language currently in version 2.0. Um, it's a standard to exchange authorization and authentication information between different security domains. And the main point it provides is just it allows that a service provider can rely on authorities or on identities that are issued by a different, let's say, authority, which is, which is called the identity provider. So it's commonly used for web-based single sign-on scenarios, and it's pretty easy to, to administer. So what happens with SAML is the, the user just tries to log in at the service provider, which is Keystone in the Open Telecom Cloud in, in our example. Um, the service provider then just gives back um, a redirection to the, to the uh, real identity provider so that the request is, so to say, forwarded there. The external identity provider is then doing the validation and locks the user on and returns an assertion tag. That assertion tag is then again passed to the, to the service provider, again, which is Keystone in our, in our example, and Keystone then just grants you access uh, regarding your, your rights that, that you have in the, in the environment. So native Keystone is well able to, to uh, support SAML as a protocol but you can only configure a single identity provider per domain. So uh, it's not possible to, to mix them up to use different ones. And it needs to be configured by an administrator, which is sometimes not what you want to have in multi-tenant use cases. And there's no API for all that federated token management configuring the identity provider, as it has to be configured by the by the admin. So we need an extension to support the requirements that we have, which are uh, more than one identity provider and the ability to configure them on a, on a tenant level. That brings me right to the use cases that we have in, in Open Telecom Cloud. Basically, we have two. The first one is rather easy. Um, it's just that we have uh, several customers which are all bound in their, in their own Keystone domain, and every customer needs his own identity provider, which is pretty common for business customers. They want to integrate their cloud offering somewhere in their existing identity management. That is something that could be configured with native Keystone on, an, on, the, on the administrator level, but for every new customer, as a, as a public cloud provider, you would have to do that configuration manually, which is, which is probably not what you want to do when you're trying to operate at scale. And the second use case is, is even more complex. It's where you have um, a customer with his own domain, and inside of that domain, he uses different identity providers. This is simply not possible with, with native Keystone, so that's why we, why we needed to uh, do some extensions to Keystone and to the API. Um, so, once again, um, the, the, the challenges we, we see is, um, first of all, we do not want to have the administrator, which is our operations team, 
to do Keystone configurations for every new identity provider that needs to be added because we get a new customer, but we want it to be configured through an API on, on, on a tenant level. Second is um, that if you have several regions in, in, in your OpenStack, which you will probably have if you, if you scale it up to a certain level, um, then you still have only one single Keystone service that might become a bottleneck. And um, that is something we worked around by, by introduction of a, of a caching proxy for, for Keystone. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, we needed the ability to support more than one identity provider per Keystone domain. And that was just uh, done by, by patching and extending Keystone. So um, that's all for the introduction part. And for the implementation part, I just hand over to you, Frank. Here you go. OK. Um, thanks, Alex. Uh, now I will introduce our identity and uh, management, uh, access management service on Open Telecom Cloud. OK. Uh, first of all, um, I, I will introduce our um, service between the federated Keystone. OK, this is the native Keystone. We uh, just use Horizon Apache Server and uh, Shibliss or Melon uh, for thermal uh, federal um, identity federation. But what we, ha we have done on Open Telecom Cloud is that um, we used um, front end, uh, we call IAM front end, and uh, we also use the cache proxy instead of uh, Shiblist and O Melon. And uh, uh, we, we have a core service called um, use the native Keystone, and uh, we have some patch to the Keystones so that we can uh, uh, support more than one ITAPS for each tenant. Okay. Okay, this is the architecture of our service. Um, there are three models. The first is um, front end. Front end is provides uh, management uh, authentication and uh, account management um, at UIs. Um, there are three components. Uh, one, IAM console deployed at is deployed at uh, delimited as uh, delimited zooms and uh, auth UIs at the trust zooms so that it will be security. And uh, second is a cached proxy. Cached proxy um, uh, just for routes and uh, locally accessories uh, the Keystone core service, which means that uh, we will deploy one cached proxy for each region and uh, uh, so that uh, it will be accelerate case, uh, Keystone core service. And uh, uh, the third one is our core, core service. Uh, it includes, also includes the Keystone and uh, also a dat Keystone database and also our uh, Keystone patch. And uh, we also have an extension database um, to, uh, to store to keep the additional information for the identity provider. Okay. Um, from now on, I will um, talk about what, what we have done with Keystone and SAML. Okay, this is our um, core service. Um, uh, the native Keystone also um, is a, a, uh, with application and a database here. Uh, we use uh, MySQL as a backend uh, database and deployed in active standby mode. Um, so usually, um, if if user at the identity provider, the information will be stored in the tables such as identity provider, um, protocol mapping, and so on. So, um, so what we have done is that we um, write a custom patch and also uh, create new tables uh, for the additional information that uh, identity provider, more identity provider will need. So um, 
we create new tables such as ex extension, an identity provider, and so on, and do not list all, all of the tables. So that um, take, taking the advantage of the Keystone extension support, um, open, open Telecom Cloud will um, support up to 10 identity providers um, for each tenant. Okay. Then next, um, this is a workflow of how to create, uh, what we have done to create a new identity provider for a tenant. Um, first, register an IDAP. Um, give the name, uh, you can, yeah, give the name as you wish. Um, and second, register a um, prot protocol. Currently, we support a uh, SEMO protocol uh, so this is a default CMO protocol here. And the third step is to create a mapping. Yeah, mapping rules is, uh, which describes um, the permissions, uh, the groups and the permissions of Open Telecom Cloud according to the user attributes from the identity provider. So um, if if you, um, if you configure the identity provider through the console, we provide a default mapping rules here. Um, uh, you can see a remote, uh, a wide card, um, the name ID. And uh, um, for local, we have a, a virtual user, uh, we call it a federation user. It's a, a virtual a default virtual user so, uh, with no other access but login and log out. So um, it is helpful if you, um, uh, we start to uh, federate it with op Open Telecom Cloud. So uh, with the default uh, mapping rule, it will be uh, convenient and easy to, uh, to trust each other, okay. And the fourth step, and this is our extension, uh, import a metadata file, okay. Um, a metadata file is a, a interface file that um, in the format uh, support a CMO protocol, which contains um, public key, uh, binding, endpoint, and algorithm. So um, the identity provider and the service provider uh, keeps their private keys for uh, encryption, and uh, uh, they put the public key in the metadata file for the, um, each other to, yes, to check the signature and so on. So um, here, when um, in this interface, when uh, you use the interface or the user portal, we will check the uh, format of the metadata file so that. Um, if it is not, uh, if it is invalid, uh, there will be an error. So for um, easy troubleshooting, so that um, it will be helpful for the customers. Then, okay, a new identity provider for a tenant is created. So um, here uh, we provide a login link. Um, for the users who want to uh, do not, uh, a different way to log into the op Open Telecom Cloud. Here, um, you can see um, different from the, um, if you use Horizon, uh, maybe um, you use the job list um, at the login page and job list and uh, select the, the other identity provider and uh, uh, import your name, uh, username, password, and, and uh, 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 also take it. But here we provide a login link so that um, uh, it is a different way. And uh, um, th this endpoint uh, in a format uh, with a identity provider name, uh, protocol type, and the service, uh, service URL so that it, uh, if you want to uh, uh, 
visit the, uh, for example, for um, Elastic Server or Elastic Volume, uh, you can add here. And uh, for the customers, uh, for the users, it will be uh, easy to access the uh, resources. Okay. Oops. Okay, this is a process of federation uh, authentication. First, the user attempts, attempts to um, access uh, several protect resources. And so here, uh, our service, um, I, I am service as a service provider. Then we will, um, here we will try to find out, uh, as you know, um, we support more than one identity providers for each tenant. So uh, it is very important that we will try to find out which identity provider and the metadata file is fit for this um, access. So here um, we do something as the keystone patch. We do the things to try to find out the correct, the right uh, identity provider. So that, um, and uh, we will find out the binding endpoint and uh, redirect to the, uh, okay, of course, the binding endpoint is, uh, is point to the identity provider, okay. Then, um, then okay, redirect to the identity provider. So uh, the identity provider will validate uh, the same request. So um, if there is a no trust have, have built before, the, this, um, this request and the identity provider may be an error. So we should uh, build the trust um, before we, we have do this um, visit. So if the, if the identity provider validate, validate the same request and um, it is success, it will present a login, login form to the user. So the user um, can import the username, password, and uh, or something else to authenticate um, to the identity provider. So, um, and then the identity provider will uh, validate uh, the credentials and uh, if it is success and it uh, generates generate the same response. Uh, okay, then the user uh, post the uh, same response to the service provider. Here um, comes to uh, Open Telecom Cloud um, uh, service. So here, um, here we, we have to do something with the same response. Um, firstly, um, we should find out the, um, firstly, we uh, validate the same assertion first. Um, um, we have, what we have done is that uh, we just validate the same assertion once. If the, if the same uh, same assertion comes twice or more than tw uh, twice and uh, three or four times, uh, we will reject it. So it, it, is, um, it is more secure than the, ori um, than the original same. Okay. And we also will validate um, if it is, uh, oh, because every SAML assertion with a, a SAML res a response with a timestamp, oh, we also will check the, if it is uh, expired. So if it is, um, so if it is expired, uh, we, will, we will also reject the SAML assertion. So if the check, uh, if the um, SAML assertion um, is valid, then of course, uh, we go to the, uh, we try to, we will, we will try use to a public key um, to verify the signature. And then comes up to the mapping rules. Um, the mapping rules, um, we will try to uh, mapping the attributes from the identity provider to our local groups and users. Okay, and then um, uh, unscrubble, un un 
on scope token and the project lists will, will return and all, um, user can with, uh, use the on scope token and uh, and the project name um, to get a scoped token. And also um, if we use a console, um, then uh, we will return, will return the protect resource to the user. Here, um, a session is created for the users and, uh, and with the permissions, with the right permissions here, so that the user can um, operate and uh, visit um, our console for the OpenStack resources. So here, um, um, this is the over uh, workflow of our uh, federation authentications. Here, what, what, what we have done um, um, for the hardening is that um, the identity, provi identity provider uh, discovery and also the a SAML assertion check, checking, um, of course, what we have done to, to the workflow. Okay. Next, um, um, the, um, show you how we delete a uh, identity provider for a tenant. So um, compared, compared to the before, um, to the to the before um, steps, it will be simple. Just uh, delete a mapping, um, uh, delete the protocol, and delete the ID IDP. And um, these uh, this three steps use the native Keystone APIs, and the third one, uh, delete the metadata file. Um, this um, we have um, write uh, extension APIs to um, for the Keystones, of course. Then. Um, okay, a new uh, I one identity provider will be deleted from from this uh, for for this tenant. Okay. Okay. Here, I, as you have seen, uh, we have some. We have some uh, extension. Uh, we have some extension APIs to Keystones. Here, um, one, one for, uh, one for import a metadata file of the ad, uh, of a tenant, and one for uh, querying the content of the metadata file uh, import imported by an identity provider, and one for getting metadata content of our service so that um, uh, it will be um, convenient and easy for the users to create an identity pro provider. So um, here, this is all about our IAM core service. So next, I will talk about our cached proxy. So our cached proxy is just for useful routes and uh, accelerates uh, Keystone um, services. So um, the cache proxy will deploy um, um, one cached proxy for one region. And uh, of course, it, it uh, includes several applications and, and I use the load balance and uh, a database and we call the tcache. So that we can, with the help of the tcache, uh, so we can help um, cache um, the essential credentials here um, at the region so that they cannot, uh, they do not need to go to the uh, cost, uh, keystone service to get the information. Um, but there are, um, are some considerations that we have to we have to do. First is that um, secure cached um, credential. So, which means that if we cache cache the the data, so we, we should make sure that the uh, the cached data will be secure. So, here um, we make sure that 
each region has its own certificate, different, which is different from the other regions. And uh, we also make sure that um, the date cached, uh, the date cached is also um, under e encryption, of course, so that it will be secure. And then limited, limited uh, scope. So, um, so as our um, Open Telecom Cloud has many uh, regions and available zones, so that um, we just cache. Uh, we just uh, catch the local regions, so means that um, if the region one um, and also a region one uh, catch the proxy in region one, so it only catch the, the the info for just the region one, not no for the other regions. And uh, also, um, no sensitive data will be kept in the proxies. Okay, and third expiration. So, um, which means that each cache, cache the data with a time stamp, and uh, if it reaches the expiration, uh, the data will be deleted automatically. And also, we have a effective and re reliable mechanism to make sure that um, the data between the cached proxy and the core and the core keystone service is consistent. So um, we have we have a mechanism that um, we will detect the dirty data so that uh, if this uh, appears we will delete delete the, the dirty data and uh, and so on. So uh, this will be helpful. Um, here next, um, I'm going to show you a sample of how, how our cached proxy works. Of course, when try to visit, visit a resource, for example, then the API um, goes through the API gateway and uh, to the cached, uh, cached proxy. So if it is find that the data, uh, the credentials, maybe um, something has cached here, and it, um, it will be returned without going to the Keystone call service. So um, it will more efficient. And uh, on, the ha on the other hand, in, in region two, um, if the user uh, try to access, yeah, first time to access uh, the resources, then um, also go through go through the API gateway and uh, uh, okay, also go to the cached proxy. But uh, the cached proxy um, found that, oh, no, not, nothing cached. So it will go directly to the core service, to the core service, or of course, Keystone, and uh, get the um, credentials or the information they need and, uh, and returned. So meanwhile, um, if the data is not is not sensitive, and uh, of course the data is this region, and uh, um, the data will will kept will kept in our cache cached proxy, so that next time um, the same visit it will be um, like the left the left picture. So. This is how the cached proxy works. And then, this is all about our cached proxy. Um, next, I will uh, talk about our front end, our console. So currently, uh, we support two ways to config, to add or delete or config a Fed identity provider. One is um, through console and uh, the other way is through APIs. So if you want to use APIs, you, you should use enhanced client or proxy, which is called ECP. Um, but uh, but uh, it is convenient we, if we use uh, portals. So on our um, website, our, on our console, we can create, delete, edit, query, and uh, identity provider, and also 
down, uh, download, upload the metadata file. And uh, also we can do um, create, delete, edit, query the mapping rules. Okay. Okay, here um, we can see our uh, console. So here we can, uh, if you click, create an uh, identity provider. Um, so a new identity provider will, will generate. So here, um, with, the, uh, with the help, we take advantage of the, our Keystone extensions. Here we can support 10 identity providers for each tenant. Uh, in the future, uh, tenants um, can apply for more quotas on demand. So, but perhaps they have to pay more. Okay. And uh, here, uh, of course, uh, our portal, we can see the, um, the end point we have mentioned so that um, uh, users can lo uh, use the login link and just uh, um, log, uh, log into our Open Telegram cloud. And then, and uh, we also have a, a button that we can upload or uh, download the metadata file, of course. And uh, we also um, can, yeah, uh, create and or edit the mapping rules, of course. Um, and uh, what we have done to the mapping rules is that um, we have a visible console and to help the users. Um, if you know the mapping rules, that it, will, it is complicated. It's very um, complicated for the beginners. So here, um, we provide a visible console that helps the users to create, um, to edit, or uh, to create the mapping rules. So here we can see, oh, okay, okay, we have a job list that um, I'm sorry. Um, uh, of course, uh, job list uh, um, for the user group you have created, and then um, the attributes. The attributes um, the, uh, also a job list for for the edu um, for the edu specifications or the or the usually also the org. Um, specifications and also we can um, select the conditions here and the value. Then uh, if we click OK create, then it uh, will transfer into the JSON format. So here um, it is um, e easy for the users to um, use our console to generate the mapping rules. Here the user um, the remote user with attributes about the uh, ideal person, principal name, and uh, with the value of CC, CCE. Then match to lo our local uh, group CCE test. So, and with the dis display name of this, this name. Okay. Okay, this is all our, uh, about our front end. And next, we will talk about uh, our security for identity federation. So, um, so um, we have to first we have to uh, prevent some uh, risks, and uh, then um, for the uh, if the then for the for links, of course. So um, I will lead. I will list some uh, what we have done, but not all of this, just for security, of course. Um, just uh, some uh, what we have done. Also uh, about the thermal assertion hardening. Um, I have mentioned that, of course, we, the thermal assertion owns, uh, just validate once. If the, if the thermal assertion come to twice or, and or more than three times, it will be rejected. And also with the uh, time step to, uh, 
uh, check the expiration. And we also have the uh, enterprise, enter enterprise level security management, which means um, uh, we have uh, permissions and access um, security um, from different use, uh, groups and users. Also, um, and uh, of course, we have a cloud service called Cloud Chase. Cloud Chase, um, this service will record all the will record all the information, which um, such as the federated user login, log out, and uh, any actions they have done to our cloud services. So um, anything that the federated users it done will be recorded at this service. So the um, administrator uh, can check also audit um, the actions the federated users have to have done. Okay. Um, okay, then uh, next I will show you a live demo for um, federated, uh, the Deutsch, I'm sorry, uh, the German, uh, German Research Network. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, federated with o Open Telegram Cloud. Uh, DFM. Mm, sorry. Oh, moment. To move it to the other screen. Okay. It's, not, it's not jump. Okay. Moment. Oh. What? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm prepared something. <laughs> oh. A moment. So we seem to be not as lucky with the demo gods as the keynotes have been, but that had to, that had to happen sometime. Okay, okay. It's still not on the screen. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, this is our portal, of course, Open Telecom Cloud. So, Here we select the projects and uh, of course our services. And uh, there are um, another, a lot of services we, we have provided and uh, identity and access management service. Also first we create a user group for the identity uh, federation here we call uh, here uh, we call the shiblis admin so uh, the, the, this is a project here and we just uh, um, have the rights of IMS and, and the server and administrator so that and then we create uh, here we have um, you, you can see we have um, went w one tenant for 10 identity providers. So D for, for the DFM, we have created here. And uh, we can see um, this is a login link for the DFM and uh, the metadata file. And also, this is uh, the edit. Uh, this is the mapping rules. We can see uh, we, here we use a wildcard here and match to our local group and shibblist uh, admin and uh, the user, uh, of, co of course, user user ID and uh, at DFN. So, so I'm sure if we use uh, this login link, try to direct, okay. Here, okay. 
um, it will uh, redirect to the DFN portal here. This is um, a German research network. So here we can input our username, of course, just the test. Okay. And uh, username. Well, password, sorry. Test. Okay, success. Uh, then you can uh, see that um, the user from the DFN have um, logged in here. Oh, this is a long ID, <laughs> very long. So um, this is uh, the name, the federated username. Um, I think I have shown you that um, the, this is the ID and the at DFN. So um, we have gave the right to the project here, edu D. I think we're running out of time, so uh, okay. maybe we have just uh, one or two minutes for questions. So if you have a question, please step up to the microphone so that it's also on the recording. You said that you had to add additional verification of the SAML assertion. Uh, beyond what's currently in Keystone, why was that necessary, and what are you additionally validating? Um, so, um, so uh, you mean that um, our thermal, so what we have done to the thermal assertion? Um, we, we, so uh, we use uh, op, um, so we do not use. Uh, as we have shown, we do not use the shibboleth or melon for the uh, same assertion. So we have write uh, a model so that we can um, do everything we can. So, um, sorry. So uh, we have uh, write a model to, so that we can process uh, uh, same assertions as we wish. So, um, um, so we can we can decide how the thermal assertion will be accepted just for once or, or twice or, and then so on. I'm afraid, I'm not sure if, if it's the answer. I suppose if you have a question which you're not using an attached module from, you sort of do it yourself. Okay, okay, sure. Nice work, um, the question I have is, you did some extension enhancements to Keystone. Did you uh, feed them back into the community Keystone version so that the broader community can actually look at this and benefit from your from your great work? Um, currently, we have not, okay, um, put the put the Keystone uh, Keystone patch to the community because um, it is. Uh, we have um, first of all we have a lot um, we have more works to do for the patch and also this is our difference from the community version this is our um, a community version this is for this is our um, advantage special advantage um, of course for open telecom cloud of okay. my name is Rodrigo um, Hi. Keystone Core, and one of the stuff that I work at upstream is Federation. And I have a doubt why you would need multiple IDPs per domain. Um, um, when you act as a public cloud provider, one possible use case might be a reseller one, where you just resell part of your capacity right. to a sub provider that then again needs to have maybe multiple IDPs in that single domain that he is responsible for. Okay. So this is probably something that, that, is, that is really special for, a, for an OpenStack-based public cloud. Okay, so you are welcome to give feedback to the community. Um, I'll be really interested in 
in talk to you and maybe raise your use case to, to, to the team. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is actually interesting because you are not the first person that complains about this one on one uh, mapping yeah. between IDPs and, and domains. So I'll bring this up. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, uh, so if there are no further questions, then thanks for having us. Enjoy the rest of the summit. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you.